welcome back to DIY Art Lessons. I'm explaining today color theory in a way that makes it very easy to understand. It's almost like color tips and color hacks. At the end, I'm gonna give you a couple of exercises that you can take with you so that you immediately employ what you just learned and then you can retain that information and take it with you. If you are enjoying this, please subscribe to our channel. That way you'll be able to see more videos. That way I'll be able to make more videos. We also have a website you can go to, diyartlessons.com. So let's make color theory easy. We're just gonna start at the kindergarten level and we're gonna do the color wheel. So you've got yellow, red, and blue. And if you mix these guys together, these are the primaries, and you have to buy a primary, you can't mix it. If you mix your primaries together, your red and your yellow gives you orange. And your red and your blue gives you purple. And your blue and your yellow gives you what, guys? It gives you green. And these are your colors. These are, in fancy art terms, your hues. And hues stay on the outside of the color wheel. How would you mix a color, say, like brown? Where is brown on my color wheel? It's not, it's not here. If you took red and you mixed blue with it, well, you're gonna get purple. And if you mix that red with the purple, you're just going to get purplish red. Or if you go the other way, you add yellow to it, well, you keep getting orange. And if you add orange to your red, you're just getting sort of reddish orange. The way you get brown is you reach across the color wheel. So you reach for the colors opposite. So with red, you would reach for green. And if you take red and you add a little bit of green to it, you soften that red, it's still red, but it's a much softer red. And if you add a little bit more green to that, you neutralize it even more and it becomes still red, but it's very close to brown. And if you add even more green to it, at some point, it'll just become a lovely black. Sometimes it ends up brown, but that's the dead center of the color wheel. It's going to be black or brown. And if we add more green to it, well, what happens then? Well, we shoot out the other side of the color wheel. These are sort of off center. And now we have brownish green instead of brownish red. And if we add more green to that, we're getting closer to our green. I need to move my green petal over. And a little bit more green to that, and eventually you work your way all the way up to green. So when you mix red and green, you are shifting the chroma of your color. You're taking red and you're changing it it's still red, but you've changed its chroma. It's neutralized. That is our second color term. Hue, chroma, and our third thing and last thing that we have to think about with color when we're doing color mixing is value. How light is it? So if you think about, say, pink, how would you mix pink on this color wheel? You can't, it's not on this color wheel. You make pink by taking your red and you add a little white to it. So. You could change the value of the red by adding white to it, but you could also change the value of any of these colors by adding a little bit of white to it. When you add white to that, I think of it like a three dimensions. We've got this flat color wheel, you add white to it, now you've got another color wheel kind of coming out towards you in space. And you add more white to it, you have another whole, you can make the whole color wheel all over again with white added to everything coming out in space more and more and more and more until you've got like Easter time is completely pastel. That's value, that's our third thing, and I'm gonna draw that with an arrow, sort of representing these colors coming out of the page towards us. And that is value. And those three things, hue, chroma, and value, is all you need to know and keep in mind when you're doing color mixing. So we're talking about red and green to shift the chroma. And there's a special relationship between these two colors, red and green, they're called complements. And I'll write that down for you here. Complements are opposite on the color wheel. So there's three pairs of complements, just in simple color theory. 
You've got red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple. Let's start with red. Red and green are the complement pair, but how do you make green? Well, green is made simply out of yellow and blue. So really, when I say red and green, I'm just saying red and yellow and blue, which are our three primaries. And that's why you can mix anything from the primaries. Or let's look at another, blue and orange, but orange is just made out of yellow and red, so really we're just saying blue and yellow and red. But it, it is easier and more direct if you can just memorize those pairs and those relationships. It's gonna help you, this is like a painting hat. Just memorize these, it'll make your life easier. So you've got red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple. When you're mixing, you're gonna always use that in the back of your head. And we'll see that. So when you're mixing a color, break it into three elements. The hue, basically what color is it? Chroma, how neutralized is that color? And value, how light or dark is that? And complements are going to help you neutralize your colors. So remember your complement pairs, red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple. Let's mix some color together and see what we can do with that. See how you actually use that when you're mixing. Um, with my three colors, just the red, yellow and blue, I'm going to mix this table color right here, whatever that just happens to be. One of the things when I start to mix that I like to think about is getting the value that I'm trying to mix first. I'm going to try to get the value accurate first. So if I'm going to mix that, put out some white. Um, what color should I start with? Well, it's not red, yellow, or blue. It's sort of this neutral. But I, I'm going to ask, is it sort of a coolish neutral or a warmish neutral? Kind of leans a little cool. So I'm going to make sure I have a little blue in my puddle. I've only got three colors to choose from, red, yellow, and blue. So I'll put them all out, and we'll just start mixing, and we'll see what we get. So there's blue. If I add my yellow to it, it's going to turn green. So I'll have to soften that with its complement, which is the red. Put that in, and it's very, very dark, so immediately I'm going to add some white to it. Got some out here still. There, so we're kind of underway and started. We're trying to mix this color. So guys, what do you think I should add next? My puddle that I'm working on, you can see it really clearly because it's touching the color that it, I'm trying to mix it to. My color is too what? It's too green. So I'm gonna add a little red to that. And I don't know how much red, so I'm going to just add it to a portion of my color. So if I overshoot, like I just did, it's very easy to overshoot. I've got, I've got more of the greenish color to dip back into. So there, we've overshot a little bit. I need a little bit more of this yellow. I'm gonna orange it up just a hair. And then I'm gonna reach back into the green that I have over here. And I'm awfully getting closer and closer. I'm a little dark still, so I'll add some white. Again, I'm gonna just do it to a portion of it because I don't want to overshoot, and it's sort of like salt, once you've overshot, you can't go back. So you guys can see that this is still a little bit green, so I'm gonna go back into this red that I have left over, bring some of that in. Some more white. And basically, it's just a game of back and forth until you get close enough it's never going to be maybe exactly perfect, but you can get pretty darn close. I'm already, I mean, that might just be good enough for government work, but let's take it a little bit better. I've only got three colors to choose from, so where do you want to go? I just feels like it needs a little bit more yellow. Sometimes I do this where I mix the aside, the two that I'm adding together, and then sort of bring them in. So I just had the last little bit here was a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. And I think that's pretty much as close as we're gonna get. You can't even really see where I just put that there. So that was pretty easy to do. All we used was red, yellow, and blue and just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until we got the color matched. Think about the value, that's always a good thing to keep in your back pocket. What I'd like you guys to do for an exercise is to find just maybe like a little scrap of a paint chip 
or any color that you find anywhere on paper, an old magazine, something that has a pure area of color. And I want you to just try and match that color exactly. And when you do it, just like I did on my table, I let the colors touch. Let your color touch what you're trying to mix it to. So even if you're mixing on a palette of sorts, bring that color up and literally touch it. Touch it to the color that you're trying to match. And when you subscribe to our channel, I will give you another good color exercise to work with. Actually, everybody's gonna get it. I just would like it if you subscribe because that'll help us get started. So here's another exercise for everybody. Another great exercise is if you take a picture, a Xerox, of a painting that you like, of anything that you like, and if you cover up a little area with a little mask, a little piece of torn off white paper, and do another Xerox of that, another copy, um, and then you can mix the colors up that are missing, almost like a jigsaw puzzle, and fill in that blank area. That's kind of a fun way to take your color mixing a little more in depth, give you something to focus on and look at. And you'll be surprised at how easily you're able to match those colors and sort of like you're a, an art restorer filling in a, a part of the painting that fell out. You're gonna fix this painting and make it, make it whole once again. You'll see how easy that is to do and that'll really help you um, learn and remember all the things that you just learned about color theory and take it to the next level. Thanks guys for watching.